Freeskiing heißt der Trend, der auch schon wieder zehn Jahre alt ist. Irgendwann haben sich die Skifahrer in die Funparks und Halfpipes der Snowboarder geschmuggelt und einfach rumprobiert. Mittlerweile ist das Verhältnis zwischen Freeskiern und Snowboardern ungefähr 50-50. Die Industrie hat reagiert und der Markt für parktaugliche Ski ist heuer riesig. Und wie bei neuen Sportarten üblich, dauert es auch nicht lange, bis die ersten Legenden geboren werden. Tanner Hall heißt einer von ihnen. Der 24-jährige Amerikaner ist fünffacher Gewinner der X Games und hat vor zwei Jahren den ersten Switch 900 gestanden, also einen Sprung mit zweieinhalb Drehungen, der rückwärts angefahren wird. Chris Cummins hat ihn in Schladming getroffen und gefragt, wie er mit der Angst vor ganz großen Sprüngen umgeht, was er von Rennskiern hält und worin die eigentliche Faszination des Freeskiing liegt. Well, Freeskiing is basically just doing skiing that you want to do and what you want to see, you know. You have no coaches, you have nobody telling you to do this, nobody telling you to do that. Everything's all good. But how much does it owe to snowboarding as a sport? Um, a, a whole lot, you know what I mean? Like, we paved the way for snowboarding from have, being the first sport to be around and give some other people some different ideas how to ride down the mountain other than just skis. Then snowboarding came along and then it got really good again and it kind of like made skiing a little bit uncool and then we kind of got the idea, so, but we got brought back up. So we owe a lot to snowboarding. You know what I mean? I got full respect for the whole community. I know that you, you've won an awful lot of free skiing competitions. Is it a contradiction in terms, you know, the competition and the free skiing? Do they really mix together? For me, I think skiing and contests, I think contests are really good for what we got going on in skiing because it gives other people a chance to, you know, start a career and make skiing their life. And, you know, like that's what I did for myself. And hopefully kids can look at that and get some inspiration and try the same for their life. One thing kids might see is your accident. I know you broke two ankles at the same same time um, a couple of years ago. Has that injury, which was horrific, has it changed the way you ski? Uh, yeah, it definitely has, but I still can ski to the point where it's good, you know what I mean? I can push the level, I can still take bad landings, crashes, do everything and be okay. And now I'm getting into a lot more big mountain skiing, a lot more powder skiing, so it's getting a little bit easier and easier on my ankles every year. So uh, no problem. It's better just getting into big mountain skiing. It's a better way to scare myself because it's like instead of the park where you're dealing with a little bit of injuries and falling and slamming your head, up there you're dealing with your life, you know what I mean? And it's just cool, it's just different styles. I guess I didn't so much mean the physical effects of your ankles getting better but has it added to your fear uh no 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 not at all you know it's just i'm just smarter now i don't do stupid things on my skis anymore i mean jumping over 120 foot backcountry gaps when it's almost pure ice on the landing or i mean on the wall and then slushy on the backside you know that's just not smart i don't do that kind of stuff anymore i know here in austria race skiing is very very popular and i was at the olympics uh two years ago and i remember you were being actually quoted for, for saying that what, what people like Bodie miller did wasn't that impressive what have you got against race skiing i have nothing against race skiing i have nothing against Bodie, man Bodie's one of my good friends actually back home i think uh He's just a good guy, you know, he comes from a good family, and I've never talked anything bad about racing. I just think how it's crazy that ski racing in the world is so much on a different level. When X Games, the one the one contest we have, has a million times more viewers to watch what we're doing than just a World Cup race or the Olymp even, say, the Olympics in ski racing, you know what I mean? So the, this style of skiing is taking over. Ski racing in the United States, no, no kid that's 11 years old anymore starts ski racing. He gets a pair of twin tips and goes out into the park. I mean, ski racing is a dying... It's a dying sport. I know when I was a kid, I was obsessed with an American skier, an extreme skier at the time, called Glenn Pate, the guy with a mohawk. When, when you were a, a kid skiing, who, who was your big motivation? Glenn Pate. Yeah. Of course. I mean, that guy, had, he, was, he was the starter of a lot of stuff. You know, he's the first personality, had the big mohawk, crazy dude, party, just loved skiing, pushed the limits of skiing, and that's kind of like what I do, you know? I don't hide behind who I am. If uh, you were a kid watching Glenn Pate and being inspired, what does it make you feel like if you think that kids in Austria are watching your videos watching your skiing and, and having the same feelings you did back then yeah it's just crazy I mean that's evolution that's evolution in life that's evolution in skiing that's evolution in everything that we do you know what I mean and uh, it's just a blessing to be at the head of what we're doing in the skiing world and I just keep every year I'm gonna just keep trying to push the level and give the people what they want 